Howdy folks. Howdy folks. Good old Josh Reese here. I uh, appreciate you guys for giving this a listen. My name, of course, is Josh Reese. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Joshua. This is my YouTube channel. This is Glorious Takes. And today we are going to be talking about the Houston Astros. Haven't done a video about the Houston Astros, but today is the day. As the season is rapidly approaching, it's time to start getting into Astros gear. And with the team expected to be even better than they were last year, it's time to really, really start talking about the Astros. So, why am I standing in front of this giant piece of paper today? Well, the paper is, well, behind the paper, is my take on what the Astros should do 1 through 9 with their batting order. Um, they had a they had a good 1, 2, 3 last year. But the rest of the offense was not that great. They upgraded, adding Nori Aoki, Carlos Beltran, Brian McCann, Josh Reddick. They upgraded everywhere. And this season, there's not as many holes as there were, la as there were last year. And with not many holes, I give you my take on how the Astros should proceed with their batting order next year. So let me, let me crash this down here. Bam! Big piece of paper. Gonzo. Now, you see all this chicken scratch here? Actual people's names. Probably not the greatest of, let's see if we can get a little closer. I don't know if that, is that backwards to you guys? Okay, I don't know. I can't tell with the reverse reverse camera angle. On my, I'm looking at through my eyes, it looks like it's backwards. It's probably right for y'all. I hope it is at least. But anyways, I'm sure you could read it anyways, hopefully. Uh, so, we've got the one, two, three. My one, two, three, of course, is going to be George Springer, Alex Bregman, Jose Altuve. Now, I know you're saying out there, but Josh, on Twitter, all year long, you've been saying Jose Altuve should bat number one. I still believe that, but it doesn't matter what I believe. It matters what A.J. Hinch believes. And A.J. Hinch has mentioned time and time again, George Springer is likely going to be leading off for the Houston Astros, which means the 1-2-3 is going to stay pretty much exactly the same as last year. Where we're going to get a little bit of difference here is the 4, 5, and 6. Carlos, uh, Carlos Beltran, who was added to the Astros, is going to be hopefully hitting that big juicy 5 hole, getting a lot of RBIs, a lot of good RBIs. Looking at a man who could bat in 100 and something runs this year. Hopefully Carlos Correa will bat in his own 100 runs. But this is how I see the 4-6-5. I see Carlos Correa, Carlos Beltran. And too bad his name wasn't Carlos Guriel because you could have a nice, a nice cool marketing scheme. Carlos Thres Carloses or, or three times Carlos or something like that. Damn, if only it would work for that marketing purposes. But you're looking at a very, very potentially scary. I feel like a TV weatherman right now. You're looking at a very, very potentially scary uh, middle of the order right here. Not many teams are going to be wanting to face this on a night in, night out basis. Especially the double Carlos is here. Carlos Correa, Carlos Beltran. Potential MVP. Man who can hit a lot of home runs and uh, is very good in pressure situations. Don't bet against Carlos Beltran. Uh, he's going to be very good. The guy you kind of worry about a little bit is Car is uh, Uleski Guriel. You kind of wonder about him a little bit. He showed a little bit of promise last year uh, towards the end of the season. This year in spring training, he's, he's slowly starting to put it together. But last year was... Um, didn't really pan out for that $50 million contract. But it was just a half of a season against pitching he's never seen before. So hopefully he can turn it around this year and be that $50 million man that Jeff Luno envisioned. Now, we're going to get to the bottom of the order, which is com going to be completely and vastly different than the Astros have seen in a very, very, very long time. So this is how I see the 7, 8, and 9 looking. I see Josh Reddick. I see Brian McCann. I see Nori Ioki. Damn! That is a legit 7 8 9. Um, there are no holes right there, baby. I'll tell you that. Now, I was looking through some of the stuff last year. I want to just. The 7 8 9 last year, comparing with the 7 8 9 this year, you had Carlos Gomez hitting 7th. 
Remember Carlos Gomez? You had Jason Castro who bounced between seventh and eighth, or, or excuse me, eighth and ninth. You also had Jake Marisnik uh, bouncing between those as well, as long as, as well as some other guys that the Astros bounced in there. Teoscar Hernandez bat a lot in the seventh, eighth, and the seventh, eighth, and ninth. You had um, you had Tyler White. You had uh, Alex, um, not Alex, AJ Reed. You had so many guys that filled up the seven, eight, nine. You had no one that was consistently getting it done. If these guys continue with the track record they've had in the years past, these guys will get it done. Now, you're saying, Josh, why the hell is Brian McCann batting in your eighth spot here? And I'll say, well, random fan who is asking that question, A.J. Hinch has kind of hinted a few times that Brian McCann is going to be batting eighth. And um, I'm telling you one thing, that's, that's a pretty scary eight hitter. Now, Jason Castro last year, seven or, or eight or nine, that's not very scary. Not very scary at all. Brian McCann, scare factor goes up about a thousand percent. Um, yeah, so very scary seven, eight, nine, that could be pretty scary as well. And it's just insane like how vastly different um, it's going to look compared to last year. You're going to... You're going to finally have someone that can hit. You can't, You count on Josh Reddick hitting. If he falls off and has a Carlos Gomez season, that's insane pants. Um, but you count on Josh Reddick being good. I think there were some signs that Carlos Beltra, or Carlos Gomez was trending uh, on the down downside of his career. I know a lot of people out there really love the acquisition that Jeff Luno made for Carlos uh, Gomez at the time. But I saw the tea leaves. I knew it was going to happen. You can check my tweets back there. Way back when. I was way against this this trade um, that happened. Ended up not panning out for him. Astros still have Mike Fires. I, I guess that's panning out for you somehow. Whatever. Um, but I just can't get over how, how different the Astros are going to look um, at the bottom end of the lineup compared to how they were last year. Um, you're going to have Nori Aoki, who I suspect is going to be getting a lot of play. They're just gonna, the Astros are going to move in other guys, like Marisnik is probably going to hit some ninth as well, too, when Aoki or, or you know Beltran gets days off or something like that. Um, but you're going to have some speed at the, top, at the top of that bottom. At the top of that bottom? At the bottom of that lineup there that could be on base for Springer or Bregman or Altuve. Um, you're going to have speed and a left-handed bat. Um, something you kind of wished you had with Marisnik. The problem with Marisnik is he was never really a consistent hitter. At least, Aoki is consistently, uh, can consistently put the ball in play. And as we've heard in, you know, uh, throughout, throughout the years, all it is is putting the ball in play and you got a chance. Uh, I hate to tie some WWE in here, but uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, James Ellsworth of the WWE. Fighting man with two hands. All you need is two hands and you got a chance. All you need to do is put the ball in play, and you got a chance. Um, so, as we're looking at this one through nine lineup, it looks pretty damn legit. Uh, some of the things I looked up was last year the Astros were nowhere near the top five of run, uh, with run score, top five offenses in the major leagues. I think we all kind of knew that the Astros weren't that great of an offensive club last year. But the best offenses were. The Boston Red Sox, the Colorado Rockies, I kind of think is a little bit interesting, but that's more of the Colorado factor, I guess. Uh, the Chicago Cubs, of course. St. Louis Cardinals, of course. The Cleveland Indians, of course. You're looking at a bunch of damn playoff teams. A bunch of damn playoff teams have good-ass offenses and good pitching, too. That's another video for another time. Uh, the Astros, oddly enough, finished 15th. I guess it's not really oddly. That's... It's just a it's just a fact. The Astros finished fifteenth. They weren't they weren't very good last year. Mainly because this man they counted on pretty much a lot of his offense. They counted a lot of Carlos Gomez and he crapped out pretty bad. Carlos Gomez was an awful, awful baseball player last year. But they ain't gonna have to worry about that this year. They've got legit starters at every position. Maybe a little bit is unknown about Alex Bregman, but you kind of he kind of are happy with the track record he showed last year after that rough patch he had when he got up here. You're kind of happy at what he showed you. So he had something. He's not a legit He's not a legit everyday starter yet, but he can show you something at the beginning of spring or at the beginning of the season and uh, really turn heads. Uh, he definitely has the pedigree. Good. Um, he showed his stuff in the minor leagues. Alex Bregman hopefully will be a legit superstar and really kind of 
make that one, two, three, like really, really impactful. Um, Springer is very scary at the top of the order. There's not many guys that can lead off the game like Springer does with his power and speed combination. I know you've heard a bunch of um, a bunch of quotes this year about hopefully Springer is going to be, uh, or that, that they want Springer to bring his speed back into the game. And in the minor leagues, he was close to having a 40-40 season. We haven't really seen his, we haven't really seen his stolen bases uh, yet this season. So hopefully that will change for the Astros this season. Um, so while this can change just a little bit, I don't expect it to change much, uh, depending on how hot and cold guys come out at the start of the season, you could see maybe Reddick move around, uh, maybe Reddick and Guriel move some, you could see maybe someone taking Bregman's spot at the two hole if he starts to struggle, you could see, uh, Reddick start to slide in the two hole. Uh, maybe even Beltran. You could see a little bit of movement if guys come out uh, struggling out of the out of the gates. But the good news is, I mean, these are legit guys that are that that they're going to be changing around. With. Last year, the Astros did not have that. When guys were struggling, they went to um, to a Tyler White. They went to um, Tony Kemp. They went to so many different guys. Even brought up Colin Moran. They tried so many different combinations to get it to work. It did not. This year, the Astros invested heavily into the offseason, bringing in these studs that I've mentioned, and um, the Astros are going to hope it pays off for them. It, on paper, on paper, this looks like it could be a top five offense. It could compete with one of these teams up here. Colorado shouldn't be up there. If they didn't have to deal with that high, high Rocky Mountain, Rocky Mountain, um, the mile high weather up there, they wouldn't be up there. They'd probably be bottom, bottom, bottom tier. Um, so maybe the Astros, hopefully, the Astros will crack into the top five this year and be a really, really dominant team in the AL West. Already projected to finish uh, as the top team in the AL West, but with this offense and a decent pitching staff, you could be looking at a really, really impactful player in the AL total. Um, so that's all I got today. I appreciate you guys for giving this a watch. My name is Josh Reese. You can find me on Twitter at Mr. Joshua. We'll have a, a video up here about the starting pitching sometime soon. I don't know if I'll use another piece of paper. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, feel free to like, subscribe. Feel free to uh, feel free to share this wherever you can. I uh, appreciate the love. Appreciate the feedback if you have any. Uh, feel free to leave it below. I always respond to people. Um, so if you got a thought or a comment, feel free to leave it, and we will catch you guys later.